Let everyone get involved because independence is not given. It is fought for. And this is the fight that we are currently waging. For a few weeks, I would say about this. There have been rumors of attempts to destabilize our country. I think that some local press have also reported certain facts. As a worker of the presidency, it was a duty to be able to give you the right information and that you could also inform other people in return and especially for your guidance and your serenity in the work. Indeed, for a very long time, we have been following a cell in a neighboring country that is run by Western intelligence. Several projects of attacks on sensitive points have been planned. The other phase, so it was targeted assassinations, which were also planned. Hello guys, welcome to our channel. And of course, if you're for the first time, subscribe, show love, support us, leave us a comment, tell us your thoughts. What do you think? Now, this is Mr. Ibrahim Traore, and I can say that he's one of the most powerful Afghan leaders that ever existed during our times. Mr. Ibrahim Traore came to power in the year 2022, on September, and he was confirmed official to be the president of Burkina Faso for the next five years. His coming to power was never confirmed by the West, and they never, never confirmed his presidency or his government. Mr. Ibrahim Traore do not support democracy. It is through democracy where our Afghan leaders uh, seems to be corrupting their countries, supporting the interests of the people who don't love Africa. He said that he is not a party to democracy and he will never support democracy through any means. So they have tried to do away with him 16 times, 16 times trying to remove Mr. Ibrahim Traore from power, but they have never succeeded. So guys, I want us to watch this video of Mr. Ibrahim Traore narrating how they have tried to do away with him through so many means, but they have never, never succeeded. Let us dive in and watch. Breaking news, guys. Another failed coup attempt on Burkina Faso leader Ibrahim Traore. Guys, they are determined to take this guy down. Four months ago, there has been an attempted coup attempt on him, which failed to happen. And now they stage another one. This time, the details provided are very limited. This time, it wasn't just a coup attempt, but assassination attempt on him. They want to buy him at once. If you are not following me, please do it now. And if you are watching from YouTube, please subscribe to stay connected. According to information, the former president of Burkina Faso, Paul Henry Sandago Damiba, who was ousted by Ibrahim Traoré and later fled to Togo, he is solidly behind this assassination attempt. They plan to stage an explosion inside the presidential residence. Sandago Damiba is solidly behind this assassination attempt. It is reported that he moved his family out of Burkina Faso this past Thursday, January 11, 2024. He did that because he knew what he was planning to do. This is not the first time his name is mentioned in coup attempt in Burkina Faso. Right after he was sacked from office, some of his men came back to overthrow Ibrahim Traoré. But thankfully, they were all arrested. And now a leaked audio tape revealed a conversation between the former president of Burkina Faso, Damiba, and his uncle who also played a part in the assassination attempt. The audio revealed that they have located four houses where Ibrahim Traoré sleeps. But the house where he spent most of his night is the one in Bonaville. And in the audio, he said that once the head of the snake is cut off, the rest will be over. So these criminals were planning to bomb Captain Ibrahim Traoré right in Midtown, while the nation is busy watching the Africa Cup of Nations. Luckily, they all have been arrested. Guys, why is it that any time a good leader emerged from Africa to serve the interests of his people, enemies within blacks will try to take him down if you notice you realize that the bad leaders they don't face much of this coup attempt and assassination attempt only the good ones but no matter what they do this is the time for africa to rise may god and nature protect ibrahim traore august 6 god grants us grace that we can meet to be able to honor our flag it was two days ago the day before yesterday August 4th, we celebrate the anniversary of the advent of the revolution of Burkina Faso, which saw thus the birth of the struggle for our real independence. On August 4th, 84, the name Burkina Faso was born with the flag that we have just raised, the coat of arms, the national anthem. 
everything has been changed. It was a hope to be able to give a new breath to our country. It was, of course, on the eve of August 5, which consecrates the proclamation of the independence that was given to us in 1960. I hope that we can work and ensure that next year, at this same celebration, that we are consolidating the real independence that we are fighting today to acquire. Let everyone get involved because independence is not given. It is fought for. And this is the fight that we are currently waging. For a few weeks, I would say about this. There have been rumors of attempts to destabilize our country. I think that some local press have also reported certain facts. As a worker of the presidency, it was a duty to be able to give you the right information and that you could also inform other people in return and especially for your guidance and your serenity in the work. Indeed, for a very long time, we have been following a cell in a neighboring country that is run by Western intelligence. Several projects of attacks on sensitive points have been planned. The other phase, so it was targeted assassinations, which were also planned. Then, mass attacks should take place within the SDF, but especially cowardly attacks that should take place in the cities. And that had as their main target, the agents of the citizen watch that, you know, under the name of Waiya. We actually followed the unfolding of their plan. And the final assault should take place through a recruitment, if I may say thus, of agents within our ranks. From the communication war up to everything I mentioned, we tried to contain the situation. Some people were arrested in this subversion, in their, their plan of attacks on about 10, unfortunately, FD personnel of the FDS who were arrested with proven complicity in connection with the terrorists who are different from those who are in the subversion. So this personnel was in connection with the terrorists, gave them the necessary information to carry out attacks. It is unfortunate that it is from Burkina B. There are still personnel of the FDS, but it is the case. In addition to that, some media also revealed the fact that certain elements of the buyers were contacted. It is true. You know that the buyers are the spearhead of the fight that we are currently waging. All those who were approached reported to us, and we are monitoring the situation. It is unfortunate to want to stay outside and manipulate soldiers inside to do what you want. It is insulting the intelligence of our soldiers and everyone has understood it. I think that these officers who manipulate all outside and they continue their work from the outside. It is not honorable for an officer to act like this. I think that for more dignity, it would be good if they returned and carried out their own project and we are waiting for them. This is to tell you that we are monitoring the situation and we will continue to crack down and act to always maintain the course that we have taken because it is a long-term struggle. These are events that will not be lacking. We disturb a lot of people, we know. Independence, as I told you, is fought for. So this destabilization project will always continue to exist, but we will fight against it because a revolution is always fought. But a revolution also, there are guards who maintain the revolution and, and you are part of it. There are people who have not been arrested so far, who think they were lucky. No, they have no change. We are following them. So all those who are in these projects, we invite them to get out. 
because we will not hesitate for a single moment to act as necessary for the interest of Burkina Faso. I hope they understand us and that they hear us. This is the information I want to give you and that people are calm. We will continue to evolve. We will take all the necessary measures so that Burkina Faso exists and is as we wish. Because there is one information I brought to you today, and this information is unbelievable. I say it is unbelievable. And you would wonder, why am I saying unbelievable twice? Well, because what I have for you today will mavel you. And that thing is about Burkina Faso. The United Nation has sent an envoy to Burkina Faso to know how United Nation can help Burkina Faso over the misunderstanding they are having with ECOWAS and African Union. The envoy was sent through Abdoulaye Madia. Abdoulaye Mardie is a Senegalese economist and public servant who has been serving as United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, Special Coordinator for Development in the Sahel since 2021. He previously held various positions within the United Nations Development Program. But the main importance of this information is what Burkina Faso replied to the United Nation. The Burkina Faso replied that they are not only abandoning ECOWAS, but they are also ready to abandon both African Union and United Nation if what they are asking for is not done. And what is that they are asking for? What they are asking for is to be free from neo-colonization or neo-colonialism. For some of you who do not know what neo-colonialism is, neo-colonialism is the control by a state, usually a former colonial power, over another nominally independent state, usually a former colony, through indirect means. Neo-colonialism was first used after World War II to refer to the continuing dependence of former colonies on foreign countries, but its meaning soon broadened to apply, more generally, to places where the power of developed countries was used to produce a colonial-like exploitation. Neo-colonialism takes the form of economic imperialism, globalization, cultural imperialism and conditional aid to influence or control a developing country instead of the previous colonial methods of direct military control or indirect political control. So they say that they want to be free from neo-colonialism, that if that would cause them to abandon both United Nation and African Union, they are ready. We reject the neo-colonial vision. Prime Minister Dr. Apollinaire Joachimson Kielem de Tambela received an audience in Ouagadougou, the regional directors of the United Nations, while staying in the space of the Alliance of Sahel States, AES. They reported to him on the discussions held with the members of the government of Burkina Faso and received his orientations. We came, accompanied by the regional directors of the United Nations system agencies, to have discussions with the national authorities, other development partners, civil society and youth to see how the United Nations support in the country is well positioned, declared, upon leaving the audience, the Special Coordinator for Development in the Sahel, Abdoulaye Mardieye. Mandated by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Abdoulaye Mardieye affirmed that the United Nations system aligns its programs with the country's development strategies. He also specified that from discussions with members of the government of Burkina Faso, three integrated programs were selected which will be scaled up. The first, at the request of the government, is to work on security, humanitarian and development issues. The second is everything related to stabilization and investments in border and cross-border regions because we are in the AES area. And the third program concerns the agricultural system, he said. And he continued, I believe that minds are moving in the right direction of constructive engagement. The Secretary General of the United Nations asked us to come and listen especially to the authorities and also to the actors and to see how the United Nations system can position itself to support you. We have had excellent guidance. Disinformation 
is a topic that was discussed during the discussions. The Special Coordinator for Development in the Sahel hoped that the United Nations and the AES countries would work in tandem to effectively combat disinformation. I would like to congratulate the initiative of the Patriotic Support Fund, FSP. I know that your goal is to reach 100 billion CFA francs, and that to date, 86 billion CFA francs have been mobilized. It is powerful. These are the kinds of messages that we must publish so that everyone feels that we are going in the right direction," he noted. For his part, the Prime Minister, Dr. Apollinaire Kayelem de Tambela, was delighted that the United Nations system was part of the vision initiated by the Sahel states, of which Burkina Faso is a part. He was nevertheless surprised to see that the United Nations had issued a statement incriminating the defense and security forces engaged in the fight against the Hydra, accusing them of civilian abuses. Since 2015 that been here, not once has the Secretary General made a statement of compassion. How can an army that we put in place to protect our citizens still attack the same citizens, he noted. This meeting was an opportunity for the head of government to recall and condemn neo-colonialism. What we reject is the neo-colonial vision. That is why we left ECOWAS, and yet we all created ECOWAS. Before leaving ECOWAS, I even said that our countries existed before ECOWAS, so our countries can live without ECOWAS. We are observing the African Union. If it behaves like ECOWAS, we will leave it, and even the UN is not excluded, he said. And the Prime Minister added that, We lived before colonization without any connection with the West, and we lived well. A country like Thailand was never colonized. A country like Ethiopia was never colonized, but they live well. On the contrary, it is the Westerners who came to drag us into labyrinths from which we cannot escape. It is to always keep us under the extinguisher. According to him, there is nothing that will stop Burkina Faso in its fight for the preservation of its territorial integrity and for its development. Whoever does not see himself in this perspective, we cannot collaborate together. Those who want to go in our direction, we agree, because after all, it is in the interest of our country, he said. Before affirming that it could be that soon we will leave the financial institutions to evolve according to our own means. Since 1960, we have been talking about aid, and we have not evolved. We have not moved. We need to question things. We talk about development aid, cooperation aid, and we have not moved forward since 1960. We need to question this form of aid, he explained. After listening to this news, I began to praise Ibrahim Traore, General Atiani, and Asimi Gorda. And you would ask me why? Because this is the first time African leaders have come up to speak their mind. No African leader has ever talked about abandoning ECOWAS, United Nation, and Africa Union because of new colonialism. Therefore, these people have done unbelievable and have to be praised for the work they did. Now, after listening, listening to this news, what do you think about the plan of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger Republic of abandoning United Nation? Do you think it's a good idea? You have listened to what they said. Do you think their reason is enough to abandon United Nation and Africa Union? Put it down on the comment session because this problem of Sahel is getting tougher than nobody expected. Now guys, after watching this video, what is your thought? What do you think? Do you think it is now too much for a man like Mr. Brem Torre to face all these coups? They have tried to kill Mr. Brem Torre through so many means. But because this man has worked in the army and understands how coups are carried, they have never succeeded, and I believe that uh, they will never succeed because Mr. Dem Traore is one of the most intelligent men that we have in Africa. So, Mr. Dem Traore, together with Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, formed a new alliance and left ECOWAS and AU, claiming that these bodies do not want to see Africa growing, do not want to see Africa developing because they are a body that are being used by these people 
to steal from Africa, to make Africa poor, to make Africa suffer. They squander our resources from our continent as they develop their own countries. So these three countries formed their own alliance and left ECOWAS. We've seen Senegalese pushing their president to join this alliance. And uh, I believe that one day, one time, he will succeed to leave these corrupt bodies and join the new alliance that want to see Africa unite. And that is what we want. We want our own armies, our own people to offer security to our boundaries and internally too. Following his assumption of command in September 2022, Burkinabe Captain Ibrahim Traore immediately set in motion a series of events. In addition to reclaiming territory and launching anti-corruption initiatives, he has promised swift action against terrorists. On the other hand, he has managed to attract Russia, put some space between himself and France, and make it through the challenging transition to civilian rule. Regardless, there are plenty who would stop at nothing to ensure that Burkinabe Captain Ibrahim Traore is not in the vanguard. An astonishing turn of circumstances reportedly prevented the assassination attempt on Ibrahim Traore, the interim president of Burkina Faso. With this latest failed coup attempt adding to Burkina Faso's lengthy history of coups and power disputes, the country's political climate is already quite unpredictable. According to reports, this failed attempt was planned by Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Sandaugo Damiba. From January 31, 2022, to September 30, 2022, Paul Henry Sandaugo Damiba, the Burkinabe military commander, served as the interim president of Burkina Faso. Ibrahim Traore, a fellow soldier, staged a coup and deposed him. The attempt to blow up the presidential residence was luckily foiled just in time. Burkina Faso has seen many periods of political unrest following the most recent attempt on his life. The arrest of four military leaders in September on allegations of coup planning exposed this fragile situation. Authorities stated last year in a broadcast statement that they were aggressively seeking more individuals and had made some arrests, but they did not provide any precise information. A lot of people are inquiring. Is the job that Traoré is doing satisfying to those who are organizing coups and fighting to have him removed? Can you tell me what they want? Have something useful to contribute to the country? Or are they just out for vengeance? It is imperative that these individuals assert themselves. The tragic incident serves as a stark reminder of the immense challenges that Traoré faces, both from outside forces and his own inner demons. They must have support from others if they intend to eliminate Traoré. It will grow increasingly harder for them to harm Traoré as the days pass, and he gains more and more supporters. Africans are tired with these people. We are really tired. We are really tired, and, and we want our freedom. Our ancestors fought for this freedom, but they never found it. What we were given was a fake freedom, was a fake democracy, was a fake independence. They fooled our ancestors. They fooled them and agreed to their terms. Our ancestors signed an agreement that they are still going to be there despite offering us independence. We're still gonna be there to monitor our operations, to monitor how we handle that government. So this is what is happening. We saw what happened to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe uh, was sanctioned because the then president never agreed with those terms and actually wanted to structure their own constitutions and their own way of governance. We saw him being eliminated because of his attempt to ditch democracy. We see what's happening in Nigeria. Nigerians are pushing so hard to make sure that Mr. Tinubu joins the new alliance of the West Africa. And it's true that democracy is not there to help Africans. It is true that democracy is not a tool for our independence. It's true that democracy is not there to help the youths get jobs. It's true that democracy is not there to help the people develop, rather to help the oppressor continue oppressing African people as they gain from Africa and leaving Africa poor. Our Afghan leaders are the people who are making Africa be poor, making Africa, putting Africa into shame because they have put their stomach first rather than putting the people first. They have put their stomach first taking in bribes in order to support the agendas of other people.
our countries have got resources which are just enough to make us live like kings and queens. But these resources are going to the wrong hands. They're going to the wrong people. They don't help the people here. They are helping the people who want to see Africa scrolling to its knees, which is very, very much unfair. What do you think? Do you think democracy is, is what is interfering with us? Democracy is not good for Africa and it was not meant for Africa because it is no longer supportive. It, it's only supporting the people who want to steal from Africa. Guys, what, I don't know what you think about this video in the comment section. Please talk to us. And of course, if you are for the first time, subscribe, like our videos. And if you've not joined our membership, please do so because you don't know what you are missing. This is Fred from Africa. And let's meet again in my next video show.